Welcome to Coffee with Joe. It's still Thursday, July 15th, 2010. Salute. Joe, we're coming back for it for a little bit more from our program for monetary reform. In the part that we recorded earlier today, we talked about the criticisms and the inadequacies of the gold standard um, and how the program yeah. comes out against the gold standard, does a fairly concise job of criticizing it, and coming out in favor of a standard of stable buying power is what they call it. Um, so what we like to call price stability, okay? Right. Um, and I've got a quote, even uh, FDR in uh, 1933 came out in favor of this standard, although he wasn't able to implement it uh, in his, under his tenure. And in fact, the money supply was contracted, I believe in 1937, in part by the deficit hawks, uh, a little bit like uh -huh. what we got going on right now, but um, in front of the London Economic Conference, 1933, President Roosevelt declared, and this is quoted in the program for monetary reform, I'm quoting now, old fetishes of so-called international bankers are being replaced by efforts to plan national currencies with the objective of giving to those currencies a continuing purchasing power, which does not greatly vary in terms of commodities and the need of modern civilization. Let me be frank yeah. in saying that the United States seeks the kind of dollar which a generation hence will have the same purchasing and debt-paying power as the dollar value we hope to attain in the near future. Okay? That's so, a significant statement, Pete. It really Ro is. Ro Roosevelt's statement. coming out in, in favor of price stability there, a monetary system, goals for a monetary system. The program here talks a lot about how we actually don't have goals for what our monetary system is supposed to accomplish. The Federal Reserve comes up with its own guidelines that it can change, but are in no way set in law. Okay, so we're talking about moving, the program's talking about moving to a debt-free money system. And, uh, of course, the Achilles heel of the debt-free money system is how do you control the amount of money that is created? so that it is free from political pressure to overcreate money, vote buying. So how does the, how does the program envision um, keeping the money supply under control and preventing inflation? Well, we talked a little bit earlier, Pete, about, about implementing that standard of stable buying power by, you know, diff a couple of different metrics that they, that they brought out. One is using the per capita standard as a, as a means of determining the amount of money this is, this is in existence. This is always about the amount of money in existence for the purpose of maintaining the stable buying power. Okay, to give the, to give to that to, would be to really determine the value of the dollar, Pete. Okay, determine the value of the national currency. It's like, by the way, only the Congress shall you know coin money and regulate the value thereof. Okay, only the Congress. Okay, so in recognizing that type of a prince constitutional principle, uh, the document gets into how you know the really it's only the government is the only one that can do that, and so they identify the body you know which is a federal monetary authority. It's it's the same as it's the same body that is identified in. Uh, the Chicago plan, you know, a, a federal monetary authority, whatever you want to call it. It's the same body that's identified in Milton Friedman's later uh, subsequent paper on the uh, fiscal and monetary framework for economic stability. So, you know, between the consensus documents of the Chicago plan and, and, and uh, the, this program and, and, and Milton Friedman, you know, if those weren't really, you know, the most renowned economic thinkers of the time, all arriving at the concept of the monetary authority, Pete, okay? Fiat currency system, monetary authority. Now, uh, what are the criteria, you know? So, so the, mon the monetary authority would be created by Congress, but it would be separate from Congress. It wouldn't be subject to week-to-week, month-to-month political pressures. Well, you know, I mean, in the design of, of, of establishing the monetary authority, you have to make sure, okay, that it is capable of being independent. 
And that is going to that to me is going to you know be a great debate. You know, it's going to be a great debate. How do we make sure that it, it stays independent? Believe me, I would want it to be independent. You know, I want it to have the authority and the ability, the capability to do what it needs to do. But I would definitely want to safeguard uh, the you know the need to have the stable buying power standard run for evermore in our monetary policy by making sure that it's independent. But in so doing, Pete, the thing to keep in mind is that is that it has in a way, a very limited mandate. You know, it has a very limited mandate, Pete, and that is to say how much money needs to be created in order to meet the criteria that we establish for our monetary policy. And if that criteria is, uh, is stable buying power, is having the right constant uh, non-manipulated uh, value of a dollar, then we can measure that how that's doing on a regular basis and hold whoever is in, in place in the monetary authority accountable for whatever fluctuations there may be because they would have complete control, Pete. The do, this document is very specific that once we have the Congress set the criteria for monetary policy and with the recommendation that that, that, that is the stable buying power, the value of the dollar is going to be established. How? By what method? By having in place the ability to create a certain quantity of money on the basis of everything that's going on in the economy or look at everything that's going on in the economy. And once they, once they authorize that amount, you know, that amount is going to be carried through in the budgeting process and, um, and everything else is very much consistent with uh, again, the Chicago plan or even Stevens Arlenga's uh, monetary uh, reform proposals. So the, so the monetary authority has a great deal of power, okay, but it has, a, it has a very narrow mandate that can be easily safeguarded against it, it getting out of hand because we would be the first to know, Pete. We would be the first to know whether it's meeting its mandate or not. And, and if, that, it's, if it's not meeting its mandate, let's say it overcreates money in one year and and inflation does start to you know inch up what well the work of the monetary authority in that year is to is to reduce you know the amount of uh, or 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 stabilize or slow down the amount of increase in the amount of money uh, so that you know it's so that it's doing its job pete if you so, can so think it of could, a it could cor correct from one year to the next shortcomings of the previous years Many, many aspects of price are sensitive in various ways to other things, everything else, okay? So you can't ever guess it right. You, you, you can never guess it 100% right, Pete. I, I think of it as a very shallow sine wave, okay, Pete? Yeah. Over time, okay? But over time, it's stable, yeah. okay? And that, that to me, you know, is kind of like the guiding idea for establishing the quantity of money and its effect on uh, overall overall uh, price stability, and it's a and it's it's a well like I said to me it's a it's a, a well planned and well thought out method for determining what the amount of money in existence is and what the price level is. Pete, so it's all there so, um, in in the in the writing in, in the writing after they discuss the. Um, constant cost of living and or market basket standard and the per capita standard, those being metrics by which we determine the amount of money. They say, and, and, and this is something that the value of money, Pete, people have to uh, have, get, try to get this type of a picture about the value of money because they say, essentially the purpose of any monetary standard is to standardize the unit of value. Just as a bushel standardizes the unit of a quantity and an ounce standardizes the unit of weight, to furnish a dependable standard of value should therefore <coughs> excuse me, be the only requirement of monetary policy. Once you get that, Pete, once you really get that, again, it's, it's, pretty, much, it's pretty much straightforward to have the monetary authority have the authority and the ability and the means and, and everything of ensuring price stability. General there, there would be good incentives to save, 
because the money would still buy in the future what it could Absolutely. buy. Absolutely. Absolutely, there would be very good incentives Better to save. Better incentive to save right now when there's absolutely none. I mean, because of how we're trying to um, manage our monetary system right now with percentage rates set by the Fed that are now set at zero, basically. So there's, exactly. there's very little incentive to save. So, you know, Bernanke said yesterday or today, you know, he said, you know, we're kind of out of, we're kind of, out of tools. The debt money fractional reserve banking system is out of tools for keeping us employed. It's time to put it in the can, Pete, and, and replace it with a new uh, mon monetary system and a new standard of value. Joe, I think the next time we get on to their criticisms of fractional reserve banking. Okay. Okay? Very good, Pete. We'll Thanks. see you, Joe.